Hello, welcome to a review on exponents. Now we're going to start off by um, talking about things that I think you can do without a calculator. So you should be able to get the powers of 2 without a calculator. So 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, and 256. All of these you should be able to do without a calculator. Now the powers of 3, we're going to only expect, you know, up to 4. So that would be 3, 9, 27, and 81. Now when I talk about knowing the powers of 3 and knowing the powers of 2, that's saying without a calculator, I want you to be able to go 2 to the 8th is equal to 256. Also, the 8th root of 256 will equal 2. So I think a lot of people can go this way, 2 to the 8th equals 256, but I don't know if everybody could know that the 6th root of 64 will equal 2, or the 5th root of 32 will equal 2. So um, if, uh, if you don't know these, make sure you're able to go bo back and forth for both of these. So if I asked you what the 4th root of 81 is, hopefully you can say that it would be 3. Now your perfect squares, most people have their perfect squares up until 10 at least. The last row, 121, 144, 169, 196, and 225. I will expect you'll be able to do these or and go backwards. So the square root of 196 is 14 and so on. So if you don't know your basic squares, if you don't know these, you should really study them. Um, now, I'm expecting also that everybody knows their 11 through 15s. Now for perfect cubes, uh, 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed again is 2 times 2 times 2, so that's 8, 3 times 3 times 3, 27, 4 cubed is 64, and then 5 cubed is 125. So those values are things that I'm expecting that people know. Also, Going back to the laws of exponents, there are some rules. a to the n times a to the n equals those two exponents added together. For example, I'll make some examples off to the right side. 2 to the 4th times 2 to the 7th, that's going to be 2 to the 11th. Now, if you, um, if you want to see why that is, 2 to the 4th is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. I guess I should move that over to give me room for my 2 to the 7th. My 2 to the, <coughs> my two to the 7th is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. All right, I think that's 7 there. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So now, if I'm multiplying these together, that's just 2 times 2 11 different times. So that's 2 to the 11th. Now, if I have 2 to the 7th divided by 2 to the 4th, that's like saying 7 2's on top divided by 4 2's on the bottom. 2 divided by 2 will cancel out. 2 divided by 2 will cancel out until they're all gone. And so what's left over is just 2 to the 3rd which we could have got by just subtracting our two exponents, 7 and 4. Now if I have 2 to the 3rd, and I take that and I square it, this rule says that that's the same thing as 2 to the 6th. And the reason is, if I take 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the 3rd, we can go back to our first rule and just add those, and it's 2 to the 6th. All right, a couple more rules. These are a little bit more basic. Um, it, it's like This is kind of like the distributive property for exponents, but they don't call it a distributive property because there's no addition sign inside here. But um, that m goes to each of the things that are inside the parentheses. Um, this might be dumb to say, but I should say it anyway. It, 18 does count as one number. So this is still just 18 to the m. 
this doesn't mean that it's 1 to the m times 8 to the m. I've uh, seen that before. So make sure that, that, um, that each number or each variable gets the exponent, not each digit. And same if it's division, the, both the numerator and the denominator will be to that exponent. So if we have 2 to the 4th, or 2 squared times 2 to the 4th, that's going to be 2 to the 6th. Now we have to remember what 2 to the 6th is. Well, this is nice, and it just tells you 2 to the 6th, which is 64. So this is our answer. All right, now if I have 5 to the 5th over 5 to the 3rd, pause the video and see if you can do it on your own. Hopefully you know you just subtract the 5 and the 3, so this is just 5 squared. Do this one on your own, see if you see what answer you get. This should be 2 to the 6th, and 2 to the 6th is equal to 64. Now this is 7 squared over 6 squared, so that's just 49 over 36. This one, pause the video and see if you can do it on your own. Well, if I wanted to simplify it a little further, that's just 5 fourths to the third. 5 to the third is 125. 4 to the third is 64. All right, now we're going to get into a little bit trickier things with zero exponents, negative, and fractional. Uh, a to the zero is always one. So any value. Um, say if I take negative 1 or negative 18 to the 0 power, that's always going to equal 1. Now, if you want to figure out why that is, let's see if we can find a pattern. Um, two, t 2 to the 4th is 16, 2 to the 3rd is 8, 2 squared is 4, 2 to the 1st is 2. So what are we doing each time as we're reducing one exponent. We're dividing by 2, so 2 divided by 2 is 1. So 2 to the 0 will equal 1. Another understanding is um, if I have a to the 7th divided by a to the 7th, if I subtract those two things, that's going to be a to the 7 minus 7, which is a to the 0. Now any number to the seventh over that same number to the seventh has to equal one. So that's another way that one is equal to a to the zero. All right, so pause the video and see what you get. All right, nine to the zero is one, five squared is 25, so my answer is just 25. Now if we have a to the negative n equals one over a to the n, this is defining negative exponents. So if we continue our pattern, oh, maybe I should have taken some time here. Uh, we're still dividing by 2, so if we keep our pattern going, that's going to be 1 divided by 2. And if I divide that by 2, that's going to be 1 fourth. 2 to the negative 3, that's 1 to the eighth. And notice how this is just 1 over 2 to the third. 1 over 2 squared. So the negative exponent is just 1 over 2 to that exponent. Here it's all out to the 16th. So if we want to do this without a calculator, this is just going to be 1 over 3 to the third. 3 to the third is 27. 99 to the 0 power. That's just 1. All right, now this problem, there's a couple of different ways we can do this. Um, maybe the easiest one is just to say 2 to the negative 10 minus negative 7. That means that it's 2 to the negative 3rd, which is 1 over 2 to the 3rd, which is 1 eighth. Now, there's something else that we're going to need to know. Even if you can do it this way, you need to think about this for a second. Um, if you want to get rid of a negative exponent, you can just put it on the other side of our fraction bar. So 2 to the negative 10 
is like 1 over 2 to the 10th. And 2 to the negative 7th in the denominator would bring 2 to the 7th up here. So here we could do this out, and this would be 1 over 2 to the 3rd, because the 7 will cancel out with 7 down here. And so that would just be 1 to the 8th. This is more important to go from here to here when we're dealing with variables, which we'll spend a lot of time with uh, tomorrow. All right, try this one out. Pause it, see what you get. All right, that 5 is just going to the um, negative 2, so that's going to be 2 times 1 25th. So that final answer is 2 25th. This one, pause the video and see what you get. Now this is going to be 4 to the negative 1, 3 to the negative 1, which just means this would be 3 over 4. Again, pause the video. All right, if I take this and put it in the denominator, that means there's just a 1 up there. 2 squared times 2 to the 3rd. So that's going to be 1 over 2 to the 5th, because I add the exponents, because since they have the same base. So that's going to be 1 over 32. This one has a negative exponent, so that's going to be 2 to the negative 3rd over 3 to the negative 3rd. Or that's 3 to the 3rd over 2 to the 3rd, which is 27 eighths. Another way you can do this is when you see the negative, you could just flip it over right away. So it's 3 halves to the 3rd, and that would just be 27 eighths. Two different ways to think about it. All right, now it gets a little confusing when we have fractional. Um, uh, so 1 over. Uh, n, because that means the square root of n, or the nth root of a. So if it's a 2, it is a square root, so this means it's the square root of 9. If there's a 2, we really don't put a 2 there. We could, but we don't need to. Uh, what two numbers multiply to get to 9? That would be 3. This one, this is going to be the cubed root of negative 125. What three numbers do we multiply to get to negative 125? And that would be negative 5. One fourth, what four numbers do we multiply to get to 16? And that would have to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So that would be 2. One key when you're figuring these out without a calculator is to think about um, something to the fourth power moves up very quickly. If it's only at 16, there, there's only a few numbers it could be. So um, if it helps, just you know, multiply them out. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is 8. Times 2 is 16. So that would work. 49 to the negative 1 half. This gets a little nastier because there's a couple things in here. If I throw that negative in there, that's, now it's going to be 49, or 1 over 49 to the 1 half which means 1 over the square root of 49, which is 1 7th. Now if we take a fraction to the 1 3rd, that's 27 to the 1 3rd over 125 to the 1 3rd. So these are the cubed roots of each of them. So this will be 3 fifths. The negative one-half power, the negative, we can just flip everything over right now. And now let's apply the one-half. So 64 to the one-half is just the square root, which will be 8. 49 to the one-half will be 7. Now if we have a to the m over n, um, the thing on top is a power. The one on the bottom is the root. So it's a to the m, and then we're going to take that to the nth root. I had a student once who went to the board, and she drew out this wonderful picture. She said, why don't you teach like this? And I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Maybe I should draw things a little bit better. So she drew these power lines, and then 
she drew some roots on the tree, root, root, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and um, she said the power lines are always over the roots of the tree. So that's how she remembered that this is the power and that's the root. Whatever helps you, go right ahead and use and remember. But if we look at this, um, we can take 27. The roots are on the bottom, so that's cubed root. And then we square it. The cubed root of 27 is 3. And when I square that, I get 9. We could also take this and do 27 squared and find the cubed root of that. However, I don't know what 27 squared is off the top of my head. Um, so it gets a little nastier. You could do 27 times 27, and that's uh, 9 times 3 times 3 times 9. 3 times 3 is 9, so 9 times 9 times 9. And I should have my cubed root in each of these. And that equals 9. But that's a lot more complicated to think about than to just do the cubed root first. 4 to the 5 halves. I would take the square root of 4, then put that to the 5th power. 2 to the 5th power is 32. 8 27 to the 2 thirds power. I would cube root first, because all both those look like perfect cubes. So that's going to be 2 thirds. Now I square that to get 4 ninths. Now this one, first I'm going to apply this negative, and it's going to flip it over, and then it's going to go to the 3 halves. Since both these are perfect squares, I'm going to take the half out, so that's square root of 9, square root of 100, but now I still need the exponent of 3, so that's 3 tenths to the third, or 9, not 9, because we're taking it to the third power, so that'll be 3 to the third, which is 27 over 1,000. All right, hopefully that will help you get through the problems that we have in class.